It's a phenomenal you. Day, the day, the first day of the phenomenon with Tanya. I am so excited. I got some special guests lined up for you. Soon to be Councilman Devin Keith, and I got the Salt and Pepper Show. So next time I see you, I'll be sitting here with Councilman Devin Keith. Make your next event, workshop, or conference more powerful with improved networking for attendees and more useful analytics about those in attendance using Confab Analytics' new professional networking environment. Sign your event up with Confab Analytics and tailor our networking environment to suit your specific event. For more information, visit confabanalytics.com or email sales at confabanalytics.com. Confab. Connecting the most important part of the network, you. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. I'm Rashad Hollis, and this is the Morning Bird Media Network. Hello, phenomenal people. I am so excited on today. It's Phenomenon with Tanya, and I have a special guest, a extra special, phenomenal guest, Devin Keith. Welcome, Devin. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is a blessing to be here. I'm excited. I'm I truly am excited. I'm excited as well. And congratulations to you for oh, watching something. You. I'm just blessed to be a part of it. <laughs> awesome. So, what everybody wants to know is who is Devin Keith? <laughs> Nobody special. I'm just a young boy from Northwoods. Um, grew up in Huntsville. A lot of people say they're raised by the village. Um, and I think it's time at this point in my life to help raise the village that raised me. When I graduated college, um, I'm an undergrad in social work. Went out to Boston from there. Worked as an underwriter in logistics. Got my master's as a McCormick Scholar in public policy and public administration. And I'm back home. All right, well, you already have my heart. My degree was in logistics. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about um, who you are as it relates to the community. Yes, ma'am. So the synergy that you have with the community, what makes you unique, different from all the other candidates? I can tell you, I think the unique thing is how I was raised. Um, a large amount of people had their fingerprint on the timeline of my life, and I've always appreciated that. Um, things weren't always great at a young age, and because of that, people stepped up and became surrogates in moments that I needed them. Um, and a lot of those people, the majority of those people, live in District 1. I would even argue there's more people in District 1 who changed my diaper than my mother did. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a unique thing to have that perspective going into policy and politics. How do we affect those people that don't necessarily, might not even vote for you, or even vote, period, but they need progressive policy to increase their quality of life? Hmm. Mm, that is intelligent for such a young uh, just man. Honest, just okay, honest. Okay, so so one of the things that I've heard around town is, you know, he's so young. Oh, yeah. Does he have what it takes to really grow this area of town? Because that's a tough area of town to kind of grow and, and, and develop economically. So do you have what it takes? Absolutely. And I'm going to say we have what it takes. Okay. You know, we call it a movement. We don't call it a campaign. It's diverse perspectives with singular action. They didn't call it the Dr. King movement, right? They mm -hmm. called it the Civil Rights Movement. And I think it's important to understand that King was just 26 when he stepped out in Montgomery and started the bus boycott movement. Um, Cory Booker was 27. The list goes on. Joe Biden was 29. Frederick Douglass wrote his first work, An American Slave, at the age of 24. Um, history doesn't tell towards age. Mm. History is made by those individuals who are there at the right time trying to do the right thing. So we see age as nothing more than a number. Mm. But we are blessed with the opportunity at 26, 27, or whatever age it is, to put a plan out there for District 1. Okay, so when you were growing up, yes, did you have in your mind that one day that you were going to run for some type <laughs> of office? Absolutely not. Uh, okay. Never in my mind did I ever think that I want to be an elected official, and I even struggle with it to this day. Um, it's a, basically a part-time job that's going to take overtime hours, 
And at the age of 27, you see your friends traveling the world, a lot of mm -hmm. people getting married, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are doing this, that, and the other. And this comes with sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And it's important to understand, I read, I stay up, I sit on porches, I sit in people, I didn't drink so much sweet tea and eat so <laughs> much um, pie, that, you know, I didn't gain that campaign weight that I can't lose. But I'm willing to make that sacrifice for the community I love. I want to be a part of District 1. And again, it's no disrespect to the incumbent now, but if we don't shift dramatically at this time, towards a new perspective for District 1, we will continue to lag behind the other districts. That is phenomenal. So I read somewhere that you were a baller. So <laughs> you're a ball player, Yes, right? ma'am. I, I was blessed. I, I see sports as a vehicle. Uh -huh. um, I'm somewhat of a nerd. Don't tell nobody. But um, I did play football. And because of that, I was able to sign a scholarship at a great school, Sanford University, and get a great education. And because of that, you know, it's a blessing to be debt free. And I don't think if I ever went to Sanford, I would ever end Wait, up in Boston. Stop. You said debt free. Yes, ma'am. Debt free is the way to be. I can't listen very carefully. Won't he do it? Debt free. He will do it. Okay, yes, go ahead. Finish. So, and because of that, um, I think it was the reason I got the McCormick Scholarship and was able to then get my master's for free and do the things I did up in Boston. That is awesome. So we're going to take a break, and yes, when we come back, we want to talk about the plan. Yes, ma'am. The Devin Keith plan. What do you call it? Is it, is it just a name? We call it the plan. We the, call it the plan. Don't elect the man, elect the plan. All right, so when we come back, we're going to talk with Devin Keith about the man with the plan. Yes, ma'am. It's a phenomenal you. Make your next event, workshop, or conference more powerful with improved networking for attendees and more useful analytics about those in attendance using Confab Analytics' new professional networking environment. Sign your event up with Confab Analytics and tailor our networking environment to suit your specific event. For more information, visit confabanalytics.com or email sales at confabanalytics.com. Confab connecting the most important part of the network, you. It's a Success begins with the decision. I made a decision at the age of 13 to want to chase the NFL dream while in a homeless shelter in search of a father that I never knew. However, there's so much more to that story and so much more that I can help your employees and your organization to reach a level of mastery. Great kickoff speaker for us for our second season. And uh, I'll tell you, if I would, I would recommend Norris to anybody to come and speak in any kind of organization um, to get people pumped up and motivated. For your next event, choose me, Norris. Norris Thomas to help you master the human experience, it will be the best decision you've ever made. Welcome back. We are here again with the man with the plan, Devin Keith. So as we were talking on the break, you know, we were talking about the synergy that him and I have. And, and as you guys know that I started the Phenomenon Experience a year ago, and it was just a podcast. So this is the first live video. And I chose this man because I looked up his plan which is why I want him to talk to you about his plan. You know, the motto for the show is feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. So I definitely think that he's feeling the fear <laughs> and doing it anyway. I mean, he's young, he's vibrant, he's strong. And as for me, you know, didn't grow up in Huntsville, but went to Alabama a and University, you know, grew up in the DOD industry. That's what you guys know me as, the government contract guru, but there's something more to me than that is this. 
So, you know, I want to push people into their destiny, push people where they need to be. And so I think Devin Keith is a part of this plan. So let's talk about the plan that you have for District 1. Well, let me just say, I don't think I could ever, you know, hold a light to your camera in the sense that uh, you're exactly He's right. A politician. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm just being honest. But basically, our plan, in a sense, does exactly what you were saying. We're pushing past the fear and really that marker of District 1 being the blighted community. We're going to start from the bottom up. Um, that comes from increasing property value. We're going to restructure how we do roads, siphoning off specific some amounts of money to do in neighborhood repairs. We want to really work in cohesion with the educational system because mm -hmm. that affects our property value as well. Right. We have to change the social narrative altruspectively so that we can insularly grow as a community. We need people to see District 1 as a city, uh, district of success yes. so that it helps the whole of Huntsville grow. That thing has to also go from development of business. As I'm sure mm -hmm. you know, uh, we have to procure spots on North Parkway to increase our business development and have people come from all around in the metro Huntsville area to District 1 to spend their time. I mean, people from District 1 go down to Bridge Street. People from District 1 go down to South Huntsville. That's right. How many people from South Huntsville come yep. up to North Huntsville? You know? yeah. So we, we really have to do those things in District 1 from the bottom-up approach. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, as you said, mm -hmm. starting. There's going to be some people who are going to feel that, you know, that we're pushing it a little bit too much, but I promise you, as you say, we, we will push past that fear factor mm -hmm. and bring into fruition the success of District 1. Oh, that was awesome. I'm just being honest. Should I say phenomenal? Oh, that's it, it's phenomenal. But I'm gonna push you a little bit. So I, I went on your website and you have these three segments. I think I saw something that Reform, said- Reform, revitalize, yeah. and replicate. That's right, so, yes, so what does that mean? So we think that if you structurally look at this thing, you must first reform the way that you think about municipalities. I tell people all the time, you're not elected me to go to City Hall. Mm -hmm. You're elected me to bring City Hall to your front door. Mm -hmm. So really, the reform thought is my city councilor, uh, by way of the Constitution of 19 Alabama, is a legislative body. He must make ordinances that increase your quality of life. Where I come in is I think it's innovation. You take a problem, which is you. I give you a solution and innovation shortens the distance. So we reform the way that we think about how municipalities work. Secondly, we revitalize specific areas. As I was talking to you about the North, Par the North Parkway area and such, we must strategically put in TIF dollars and bring in private and public partnerships that increase the occupancy rate of those areas so that we don't have a blighted building area stretch in North Huntsville like we do now. Um, that also goes to other places such as putting in greenways and walks in certain areas that adhere to the culture of our community as well as the constituents of the community. And then finally, we must replicate strategic things that go around community policing. Um, don't let anybody tell you what's going on in North Huntsville has happened in places like Detroit, Cleveland, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Charlotte, Eastside Atlanta. And they've done strategic things in places like Newark around policing. Um, around homelessness, something that we don't talk about, around unhealthy. Um, there's a large uh, diabetic market in the sense of, of North Huntsville. We have to do things and initiatives that are tailored to fit our district that we've seen success in other areas. So those three R's, and they didn't start off as R's, but those three R's represent how we're going to approach this next, you know, Lord willing, after October 4th, this first term. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know of anybody that I would have had on this couch with me for the very first time, but <laughs> Devin Keith. I am blown away the just about the maturity, just about the intelligence, um, your research. You know, a lot of times, you know, people talk about, you know, our African American males and, you yes. know, what they're doing. But, you know, I want to personally commend you, Thank you. for going down the phenomenon experience, is what I call it. So yes, how would they get in touch with you if they want to, you know, donate or whatever they want to do? And Absolutely. Talk to them? They can go to my website. That is Devin S. Keith, um, D-E-B-Y-N. S K E I T H dot com. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm usually inside that social media internet verse. It's about four people handling everything, but I promise they'll get to me. And, and as always, as I tell them, on a lunch break, if you want to get a coffee, I usually spend most of my time doing Starbucks. Um, for some reason, I haven't lost weight, but I don't eat much. <laughs> and I can come to your house and sit down and have that conversation. So I think it's important to understand that you should have constant contact with the person that either you voted for or you voted against because that person is going to represent you. So anytime, any way that they want to contact me, DevinSKeith.com or Facebook, or Twitter, whatever, I promise I'll get a response back to them. All right. Well, this was a phenomenal Absolutely. interview. Is there anything else you'd like to say or I'm just, I want to say we're excited to have you in the community. And we're excited what you're going to do. And though this is the first of many, 
we're excited to promote this phenomenal experience. And I want to say thank you so much for having me. Well, all right. Yes, ma'am. So, guys, so we're going to let him go and we're going to come back. We're going to have my friend Jenna. We're going to recap and, and talk about what Mr. Devin Keith was talking about, summarizing things. It's the salt and pepper phase of the <laughs> phenomenon with Tanya. So, thank you for listening to the interview. I'll see you back on the flip side with Miss Jenna. It's a phenomenon. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. I'm Rashad Hollis, and this is the Morning Bird Media Network. It's a phenomenon, you. Everybody, we are back and we are back with my girl Jenna. So we call this the salt and pepper side of the show. So it's not gonna be real serious. So don't think you're gonna get anything out of it. Except fun. So this is Miss Jenna and I'll let her tell you hey. a little bit about herself. So I guess obviously I'm gonna be the salt <laughs> um, <laughs> part of the show. So I am Latanya's BFF, we have been friends for over 10 years, I guess now. Mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> she asked me to be a part of the show and I was honored that I could be a part of it. And the phenomenal she sounds experience. so sick. Yeah, let me tell you something. She is not this serious, okay? This she is the first show. She I'm, is I, not. I'm trying this to be serious, she's but I'm trying not, to be. Uh, really let, not. Let's get it. Let's let's let's, <laughs> let's get into what we're supposed to be because I'm, I, we need to loosen up. Cause she, I'm salt. Hey y'all, I'm salt. So I'm pepper. But anyway, so let's talk about. Did you did you see that oh, interview with Devin Keith? Yes. Oh my God, that was awesome. Okay, not only is he smart, intelligent, has a great plan. But honey, he, he is ha. easy on the eyes. <laughs> is he single? He young. He young. He a little bit young. I think my daughter might date him or something. <laughs> I might have to rearrange or arrange some type of marriage. But um, I think that he's he was really great. smart. Really? I agree. I think, I think that um, with the community that he's trying to uplift on, um, you probably ain't never been on that side of town. No. <laughs> <laughs> you probably ain't there. So <laughs> I might take you over there. <laughs> but yeah. you, you got to stay away from that okay. side of town. No, not really. No, I'm, I'm just kidding because that's the side of town. I go to church over there. Right. Yeah, you got to go to church with me. Yeah. You going to go to church yeah, with me? I will. Yeah, she said yeah. that. You see, y'all, I made her I say that. I made her say it. It's a whole bunch of us at our church. See, I took it to another church that got salt people. <laughs> but it's I a whole don't bunch care. of us. You know, that's the thing about. Latanya and I's friendship. We kind of are all over the place with, we have all kinds of friends, diversity, and um, I don't know. I think because we are different in so many ways, but yet we're a lot alike in other ways, and that's what makes us friends. So. That's true. So follow us on Phenomenon with Tanya. You know, I promise you the next show we'll talk about something serious, but I kind of just wanted to introduce you to my salt, to the pepper, to the salt, to the pepper. Uh, so anyway, so we're excited about Phenomenon with Tanya, so join us next time. I promise you we'll be more serious. But guess what we want you to do? We want you to feel the fear and do it anyway. It's a phenomenon.